Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 14, Episode 114. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. Thanks for being back with us here this Friday, Steelers Nation, just under two weeks until the 2024 NFL Draft kicks off. And Dave, I have a feeling you're even more excited for this show than usual. You're kind of chopping at the bit, as they like to say, some some center talk, some studies and deep dives you've been doing. So I think we're going to get into it today. Yeah, I think I have myself a hill to die on today. Uh, <laughs> you have many uh, hills. It, yeah, there are a lot of you mountains. And, and, it, and it comes to Graham Barton and, and you know, someone that, that that's kind of, I, I don't want to say polarizing, but just, you know, big discussion about that guy throughout the uh, pre-draft process and, and obviously kind of trying to link him to the Steelers and all like that. So, you know, it's not going to be a huge hill to die on, but I do want to talk about him today. I want to talk about the center position, uh, specifically if the Steelers don't address that in the first round, what potentially that might look like. I've done a couple of studies I've put up on on, on, on the site on Steelers Depot the last couple of days. Hopefully, hopefully people have enjoyed that. I've enjoyed deep diving that. And yeah, I think center has been kind of my – my hot button, I, I I think for most of this uh, uh, pre-draft uh, you know uh, process here. So we'll 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 talk quite a bit about that today, and uh, should have some good conversations on it for sure. But before we do that, we'll talk about some other Steelers news. Pittsburgh adding to the roster since we last spoke. Dave signing for the fourth time kicker Matthew Wright, who initially was with Pittsburgh as an undrafted free agent out of Central Florida, has been. Uh, on and off the roster, bounced around other teams, but he is back now in Pittsburgh, signed to their offseason roster, a one-year contract. You can offer the details of that deal, but Wright will be the backup kicker for Chris Boswell this summer in training camp. Alex, I don't think you can go wrong with Wright. Hey, oh. <laughs> hey, boo, boo, hey, boo. That was bad. Hey, I'll be here all week trying to <laughs> build. Uh, look, a familiar face, as you stated, uh, no threat to Chris Boswell, barring injury or some sort of wheels falling off. Uh, he, he, where hasn't he shown up at this point? I mean, he's, he's, he's kicked for several teams. He's uh, nailed a couple of, of, of long, what, like 59 yarders, something along those lines. So uh, this is a guy, uh, the team will probably want to take it easy on Chris Boswell throughout the rest of uh, the summer here. And you know, no, a guy that you know, a guy that knows what his role will be, uh, just, just, you know, kind of the perfect extra leg, I think to have, uh, in, 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 in camp here. And if you look at his contract overall, it is the minimum for a player with three credited seasons. That means $1.055 million, no signing bonus, no guaranteed money. He knows the deal here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure when it comes to, uh, Chris Boswell and, uh, you know, is he likely to make the 53? No, but, uh, at least he keeps his leg warmed up in the process there. And in signing him, he entered the role of 51. He used up all of $70,000 in 2024, uh, uh, salary cap space. So, uh, that is the long, the short, the wrong and the right about. Matthew Wright. He's actually been a pretty decent kicker in the yes. NFL, including with Pittsburgh. That one of the recent stints he had, I want to say in 2022, he had kicked well and got a game ball when they beat Atlanta. And he got cut after that game because Boswell got healthy. But yeah, his leg strength has really improved. I remember watching him coming out of Central Florida and his max was about 50, 51 yards. And as you said, he's kicked a 59 yarder uh, in the NFL uh, elsewhere, I believe, with maybe the Chiefs or some of Jacksonville, whatever other team he was with. And so the leg strength is really improved with him. But yeah, the, the reality is Chris Boswell's 33 and that's not incredibly old for a kicker, but it's still 33 years old for a kicker that's been in the league since 2014, 2015 with Pittsburgh. And so you want to manage him. Danny Smith, I think last year talked about, they changed up Boswell's routine. I don't know exactly what that means. I don't think he revealed it, but 
Uh, you want to make sure you preserve that leg that is getting a bit older and has some mileage on it. So Wright is maybe not just your standard bring in this rookie unknown kicker. He's an accomplished kicker, I think. But certainly, as you said, no threat to Boswell barring something dramatic occurring. Right, right. And right. <laughs> right would right. Yeah, right. And right. <laughs> also, he's really smart. Remember, he was the uh, engineer. I, think, I don't know, space engineer, something like that. It was him and Josh Dobbs was the talk whenever Wright got signed initially. So uh, he'd probably be the smartest guy in that locker room, even if he's not the number one kicker in that locker room. OK, enough kicker. No, there's no such thing as it's like cowbell. You need to have more kicker. But let's talk pre-draft visits here, Dave, in Pittsburgh. We talked about on the Wednesday show, the ones that came in as we were, were recording in Oregon Center, Jackson Powers Johnson in Notre Dame, right tackle Blake Fisher. Since then, we had at least three new names or really three names added to the list. One we are already knew um, in terms of being reported. But since then, uh, Christian Boyd, the nose tackle from Northern Iowa, has come in for a visit. Ditto with offensive tackle from Oklahoma, Tyler Guyton. Reportedly, Cooper DeGene from Iowa, really interesting name, likely first-round player, uh, is going to come in for a visit. Don't know the exact date on that. And according to The Athletic, I uh, don't have any confirmation on this or many details, but Georgia wide receiver Lad McConkey had come in for a visit at some point as well. So if all that is true... We're at 28 names of their allotted 30, not including the local players, the pit guys and, and, and uh, local uh, prospects. But uh, overall, Dave Pittsburgh loading up on offensive tackle even more. And now you had Cooper DeGene in that mix as well. Yeah, what a uh, interesting player, a, uh, a a guy that can move around all over, probably in parts of the secondary there. And, you know, a guy uh, that had to was was battling. What 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 injury is, was he battling this offseason? Yeah. Broke his leg. Okay, broke his leg. That's right. Uh, uh, and just recently had had his kind of his makeup pro day, I think, uh, a, as well. So, uh, is he a slam dunk first round guaranteed guy to come off the board? I don't think so, but he's certainly a guy. I think within the first, uh, you know, fifty five picks of the draft should be off the board. Yeah, I think that'd be on the low end. The injury complicates things. The depth of the class overall maybe complicates things. And I imagine Pittsburgh wanted to get him in because he had been so limited in the pre-draft process. Uh, we don't. There was Jim Ward, an area scout at the Iowa Pro Day initially, but again, the gene not working out was not cleared. As you said, he held his workout on I think it was the eighth. What was that Monday? And so it was actually Boyd and the gene working out. Uh, I guess Boyd had been injured in this process as well. And uh, DeGene had just gotten cleared less than two weeks prior to his workout, still put up really good numbers overall. So yeah, potential outside corner, slot corner, returner, although in Pittsburgh, in returners, defenders, they don't typically mesh with Mike Tomlin, Alan Rossum, the lone exception to that. So, you know, is he in the mix? Is that is this almost, you know, if there's a really big run on tackles, then you have DeGene in your back pocket. Is that maybe the calculation by Pittsburgh? I would be surprised if he's in line for 20. It's not, it's not impossible. I mean, look, this is a guy that, especially early on in the process was, was deemed a slam dunk first round guy to go somewhere in the first round. Right. And it right. feels like as the tape and every, you know, the rest of the board has all caught up. It, it kind of feels like he's been pushed down. Uh, is would it, would it, would it be breaking news? Not overall, especially with his pedigree and what he accomplished at Iowa and all like that. But I, I, I got to admit, I would be a little bit surprised if the board broke wrong, if he if he ended up being the picket at, 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 at 20 overall. So what do you think the catalyst or reason to bring him in is? Is it just as a get to know you because they didn't really get to know him in the pre jet process? I think that and, and with this slight possibility, maybe he did slide on down. Okay. Uh, uh, he, it's hard to get a kind of feel on, to me, it's hard to get a feel on where he's going to go in this draft. I think late first round is going to be my guess. I'd be maybe very early second round, but I, but I think he's going to still be conventionally viewed as this first round kind of guy. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but you know, look, uh, Malachi Corley. Now they do need a receiver as well too. And, you know, they brought him in, but he was a guy that, you know, maybe they didn't get to learn all they wanted to learn about during the pre-draft process. So, you know, a lot of times when you look back at these lists over years, 
uh, they're guys that they like, that they want to get to know, get to know more about, but th- that they that they have a good idea that they're probably not going to be able to draft, but they might be able to revisit four years down down. You know, you don't know the plan for each one of these. They're they're bringing each one of these guys in, obviously, to get more information on them. Sure, and I think that makes sense because remember Corley couldn't do anything at the combine. He had COVID, didn't get to weigh in or anything. And so those guys you kind of miss out on, you want to make sure you go back and, and double check. And the gene, I mean, you got to you know, see him at the combine, obviously, but didn't work out. So uh, maybe you just want to get to know that guy more. But I mean, they, they've they brought in now, what, two first round corners in Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeGene. They were at the pro days for a lot of these top corners, Alabama, Arnold, McKinstry, Wiggins at Clemson, Sandra still from Michigan. I mean, I think we all can probably agree that offensive line is still the most likely path they take in round one, but maybe corner is that backup plan. Because what if there is a big run on tackles and right tackles in particular uh, right before Pittsburgh? That may put them in a a difficult spot where, you know, corner becomes plan B. Sure, sure. Absolutely. And look, once again, DeGene is one of these guys that can move around in the secondary as well, too. Right. And that will help for a team that needs help in outside corner, certainly needs help at slot corner and anything else that he could potentially offer. So there is something attractive there. And again, he put up great numbers. What was his actual? I think he ran in the mid four fours and had a great vertical. And again, two weeks cleared. I mean, you talk about, you know, it, it, it it's not just about being a great athlete. It's going to produce great testing numbers. you got to train at this thing, too, and learn how to get into a stance and you know, go through events and really work on it. And the gene did not really have that opportunity. And he still put up fantastic numbers, despite hardly having the, the chance to train coming off that broken leg. And so that's to me, even more impressive to put up those kind of numbers at his workout, considering he really had no time to prepare. Right. And, and, and to have the discipline to get himself back in, 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 you know, uh, have the ability to do that in, in the mm-hmm. short time frame as well, too. Now, Boyd's numbers comparatively were really poor. Again, you could sit there and say that he didn't have the chance to train much either. Um, not that we're super focused on, you know, shuttle times for him, but uh, his numbers overall were poor. But that's a potential day three defensive lineman, uh, small school type of sleeper that hopefully his, I mean, his tape is better than how he tested at his workout. Uh, this is the kind of guy that if you don't get a guy like Mason Smith or uh, Cora Cora uh, uh, early in this thing, uh, that that would give you a fallback option. Is he more interior Ahura? though than a horror? Sorry, yeah, instead of yeah. Core core. No, I got you. Um, because I mean, Boyd came in around three twenty nine. He's a bit stockier. He kind of feels a bit more D tackle, like nose tackle. I mean, he came in, I think, what six two one three twenty thirty one and a half inch arms. It almost feels like I'm not even sure what the plan would be with him. But if he was less, you know, four eye, and if he was kind of more shade one tech. And this was a guy that wasn't even at the combine, right? I yeah, I don't believe he was. Our notes here have him as a Shrine Bowl invite. Was he not? Was he not at the combine? Was he snubbed? I think he was snubbed, wasn't he? I'll have to double check that. But again, he's been hurt in this process. I forget. I mean, it was a hamstring issue, and so he worked out on the same day with the Gene at Iowa, um, and then Pittsburgh, uh, bringing him in for a visit to. I mean, which is notable. They bring a small school guy for a visit. That is certainly something they don't do often. And so for that to occur says something about the interest they would have in him. Uh, agreed. And yeah, I'm not seeing him on the combine list here. So uh, Pierce, he w- did not uh, come in for a visit. Guyton, uh, a guy we've not talked about much in that potential first round bucket. It, it almost feels like, oh, who was the guy last year? Anton Harrison, uh, yeah. the, the tackle. kind of feels like that where it's uh, an athletic type of guy. And you know, maybe Pittsburgh's shown some interest in him. Does not doesn't really feel like he's going to be the pick. Maybe that's my own bias for not just thinking about it more. He's huge. He's athletic. There's upside. I, I just, I, I feel like if you want the high upside right tackle, you're going to go Marius Mims over Guyton. But I mean, they're showing interest in both guys. Uh, yeah, he does feel a little bit of like, like, like Harrison last year though. But I think he doesn't have a little bit longer. He's, he's a longer guy than Harrison mm-hmm. was. Yeah. I, I guess I see it in the stance of like, a tackle option, but the Pittsburgh shown some interest in, but really ultimately you don't feel like he's going to be the pick. I'm not necessarily comparing that in terms of how they play, but just kind of in the bucket of it's a kind of plan B tackle option. Uh, other than not having Tomlin and Khan at his pro day, he should, he should check all the boxes there, right? How old is he? Is he younger? I don't know if we have an age. 
on him. Uh, uh, we should in the... the the beast. If you, I don't have the beast pulled up here. I'll have to. I, see I don't I have that. one in our report. Uh, maybe twenty two, turning twenty three. Just because Pittsburgh generally skews a bit younger. Not that they're beholden to that, but yeah, I mean, I think you know he's played right tackle. He's got size. He's athletic. Pedigree visit. Certainly, there are key boxes being checked. All right, I don't. I, I got like eighty six tabs open. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, it, it shouldn't should make too much of a difference overall. So, want to mention that on Guyton for sure. Um, I, I just don't get the sense he's the 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 pick here. But if if Fawag is gone, if fontenu has gone, you know, if Mims is not their guy, I, I don't want to discount Guyton either. Okay, fair enough. Uh, oh, I just pulled it up here. Twenty one point eight seven with Guyton. Oh. Okay. Uh, so born, pretty young. Uh, ev- you know, according to Dane Brugler, June eleventh, two thousand and two. So he's about to turn twenty-two. Okay. So that actually fits into that well for Pittsburgh. They typically like a, a younger guy um, in the first round to develop and grow and have on that second contract for you know hopefully throughout his twenties. Here, here's the thing with him. This is a this is a this is interesting when you get into. Uh, uh, a, a lot like Mims, he's a guy that doesn't have a lot of starts under his uh, under his belt. Just 15 career starts uh, for uh, for Guyton overall. Well, that almost mirrors Broderick Jones right. exactly. I think because Jones was at around 14, 15, and that's almost doubled Mims what he has. But point taken, yeah, not a ton of tape on him. There is certainly a developmental aspect to him. I, I think it's a it's a worthy question. I was thinking about that some more. I mean, if Pittsburgh drafts a tackle in the first round, draft anybody in the first round, you expect them to play right away. If they draft the right tackle, I'm assuming they want that guy to play immediately. And do you have enough confidence in Mims and even potentially Guyton to play week one? Now, wait, if you go back and parse kind of some of the stuff that Omar Khan has said, uh, you know, what to get want to get Broderick Jones to left tackle at some point does not know to me and kind of parsing some of the things that Khan has said, they're open to taking a guy uh, uh, that, that that maybe plays right tackle that might take half the season to get in there, like Broderick Jones. Yeah, I get that. It just, I don't, I mean. I mean, I think- but but like we said, I, they're not going to go. Uh, I think they would have the willingness not to rush that guy. It doesn't mean that, that we, whatever kid that they draft wouldn't get the opportunity to come in and, and obviously compete. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 for the job, but I, the way I took it, especially when kind of parsing several weeks ago from what Khan said is, yeah, we definitely want to get Broderick Jones over to, uh, to, to, to left tackle at some point. And I'm paraphrasing here, uh, uh, to left tackle at some point, but it might not happen in, in so many words. It might not happen as quick as, as, as most of you, uh, IE Alex Kazora wants it to happen. <laughs> Sure. Uh, um, he said eventually was the, the right. word that he used. But if, if they do draft somebody, I mean, do you want to make this midseason switch of moving your right tackle over to left tackle and putting this rookie? And at least last year was a one to one thing. They swapped out a core four for Jones and that was it. They weren't changing 40 percent of their offensive line. I mean, look, I in a, in a perfect world, would you like. Uh, Mims, Guyton, whoever uh, to come in right away and be that right tackle so you can get uh, Roderick Jones shift over? Yeah. But I think you have to be open to the aspect that if you get a talented guy there that might need a little bit of grooming, coaching, and all first uh, to, to uh, you know, to, to make him one of the top two on, mm-hmm. on this line, then you have to be open to that. Once again, look, in a perfect world, yeah, the guy that you, if you draft a tackle uh, somewhere within the first two rounds of this draft, you know, you 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 obviously give him the opportunity to come in and compete for a spot, but sure. I don't I don't think you nail that to the cross either. Yeah, I don't want to say that you you write that in pen and you hand it to the guy. I'm just thinking about ideally, you know, what you're looking for, what your team needs, and a midseason switch would be messy. It's a fair point, and and, and that's a good point by you. I mean, you know, they could take that approach. They took it with Jones. He didn't start the year and had a – heck, if a core four doesn't say whatever he says, does Broderick Jones even play more than the games he did in relief of Dan Moore early in the season? I don't know. So – that's a fair point, but I mean, I just wonder if that's going to be if, if they have an experienced right tackle versus an inexperienced right tackle. Will the experience win out, or will they 
try to play the long game of, okay, this guy's less experienced, but we think he can be better in year two and year three and hopefully year 10. And and we're still going to go with the developmental type. Yeah. And it's a good point. You know, had, had Jacormo Okorafor not run his mouth, how much longer would he have been in there? But, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I don't think he would have sat all season. I don't know. I mean, he, he, we're already, they were already in mid season by that point. So it would have, I mean, maybe Jones starts late in the season, but his, I mean, it's all, you know, irrelevant. It's all moot. Jones right. was the guy mid season. So we'll see overall. I, I had a, a question for you before we kind of get into center talk. And I thought uh, that Ross and Joe and check out uh, episode two of the depot dive that went up yesterday on the site, on the YouTube channel, they had a really good discussion about thought new from Washington why do you think Pittsburgh is showing interest in him? When I say that from the aspect of where do you think they view his NFL position being? Because he's a le- he was a left tackle at Washington, played a bit of left guard as well. Obviously, you know, some are projecting him inside the guard um, because of the lack of you know height overall, lack of size. In Pittsburgh, he won't be a guard. Do they view him as a right tackle? Do, would they try to flip him over? Do they view him as, you know, they had even brought up center talk. Dane Brugler said that he thinks Fontenot could be a five position guy, a potential center. I, what do you think they come in on him? Look, I, I've said from the get go with 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 Fontenot that I think he's a guard. Uh, okay. But uh, what do you think Pittsburgh? Because they can't see him as a guard and have this much interest in him. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, maybe once again, look, and he's an older, a little bit older guy too, isn't he? Like twenty three and a half or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a great question. Yeah, maybe it's one of more of this get to know kind of, kind of guys. And look, I mean, if he, if he, maybe they know about the, more about his ability, maybe to potentially play center, but look at this, it gets real. I, I, the hardest thing I have, uh, w- w- with a few of these guys is, is, is playing them out of position, you know? Right, which uh, they would be doing. I mean, right. they, they can't view him as a left tackle and draft him as a left tackle because no. I know they do want to move Jones over to left tackle. Right. And look, has it has it had have there been great conversions before of, of college guys coming in that played left tackle that moved to right tackle or right tackles that come in and move to guard or, or tackles that move to guard or guards that move to centers or centers that move to guard? Yeah, it, <laughs> it, 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 it happens and it's mm-hmm. going to continue to happen. It, it just the Steelers aren't normally a team that that does that, though. Although they just took their left tackle last year, made him right tackle midseason. We never right. played right tackle almost an ounce in his life. Right, right. But they, you know, uh, other than that, I mean, they don't have a history really of doing that. And I sure. think it's one thing to go, to, you know, uh, look, but but here's the thing that even Broderick Jones had said in the, in in uh not long after he drafted, he he had he had experience switching sides in practice. Yeah, but practice at Georgia and, versus right tackle in the NFL. Sure, even at sure. Georgia, it's a different different world. But it wasn't totally foreign to him. I know, but how many how many game snaps had he ever taken in college sure. at right tackle? Right, right. A couple, maybe. Right. To to me, it's a it's maybe a little less messy than 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 normal. But okay. I mean, it's still messy. I don't think you want to get in a habit of. Let's put this left tackle at center, or, or right. you know, uh, you know uh, 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 that kind of thing. Even though you'd probably, you'd be doing that with a guy like Barton. I mean, you're set. You you're almost setting me up here uh, a little bit. Uh, but um, personally, I just wonder. look, I I am not shocked that that Dane Brugler has Fontenot as his top guard prospect. Why wouldn't you, with a guy that moves the way he does, uh, that that lacks the overall uh, height aspect of him, uh, and doesn't have an enormous arms. Uh, why would you consider mo- kicking that guy inside? Sure. That makes sense. But from Pittsburgh's view, they can't view him as a guard and again, have this much interest. So do they view him as a right tackle? Could they view him as a center? I mean, they, my guess would be they view him as a right tackle. Just logically, because he's not they'll move Jones over and, and, and switch. But then, of course, you're having an extra layer of projection of how this left tackle is going to look on the right side. True. I mean, look, Just we we, we we never know the real reason why some of these guys get brought in and and, and if they don't end up get getting drafted. But look, you have to be you know, there's only so many top really kind of 
tackle guys in each class on top of it too. So you better, you better get to know him, you know? Sure. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And, but I, he's kind of the, the outlier because the other guys they've looked at Guyton right tackle, primarily Mims right tackle Guyton, um, excuse me, Fawaga right tackle. And then you have Fontenot new as a, as a left tackle Fisher right tackle as well from Notre Dame. All right. Uh, and, and look, I mean, if, if you know, talent, talent is talent. And you can't be a, you know, you never can be a, opposed of drafting a potential Hall of Famer. Now, I'm not saying Fontenot's that guy, but I mean, uh, he he is associated with the first round of this draft for a reason. Personally, I'm expecting a team to draft him uh, 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 to play guard, but I mean, you know, six foot three and three quarters is not unmentionable when it comes to uh, guys. I don't think he's going to be at left tackle. Why do you think he'd be a right tackle? I, I I think if I think if a team does draft him to play tackle, uh, you know, not not kick him inside. I I think team uh, you know a team could look at him as as, as a right tackle. Why he not just, a left he, tackle? He's he just not long enough. He's got longer arms than Fawaga. Sure, but, but I, what, 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 what what how does the lack of length make it easier to play right tackle than it does left tackle? I I just think that 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 that's the way that you see these guys go. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I think certainly a team could draft him as a guard. And, and you're right. There's something to be said about due diligence and look at the top guys and what if he falls and you want to, you know, even just be able to compare. Let's compare Fontenot to Fuaga and just kind of see how they think and, and systems and evaluate the tape, you know, look at some of the best guys. So I'm not knocking the interest in him. My, I guess my, I guess my question is, OK, hypothetically, Dave, if I told you the 20th overall pick was, was Troy Fontenot, what position is he intending to play? What, what position is Pittsburgh intending to play him at? If the Steelers drafted him, uh, I would think that they would have the ideas of him playing right tackle. Me as well. But it is curious because he's been a left tackle through most of his college career. All right. Coming off of that here and kind of segueing to the the hills, the mountains you'll die on. I'm not even sure. You've done a ton of work on centers, on Graham Bart, on historical centers, on the NFL and, and center wide depth charts. You have been just burning the midnight oil and been some really great posts and some great information there. So you tell me, Dave, how do you want to start this conversation? Because it's kind of like a big a big tree of center with a bunch of branches off of it. And so you tell me how you want to start presenting your thoughts on the center class. Yeah, and I'm not even sure which way to kind of start with this. I, I, I do want to kind of start, though, with, with, the, uh, with the aspect here of Graham Barton. Uh, and obviously, we've talked quite a bit about how little he played center in college at Duke. Uh, and since then he's played left tackle. I want to kind of focus in on two. I mean, you look at his athletic, I mean, the athleticism, especially is his tackle tape. And then, you know, what, what he's done during the pre-draft process. I mean, all of that matches up, uh, with him as well too. Uh, what, when you have guys that are six foot five and 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 three eighths at three thirteen that have the athletic profiles uh, with him, and if he and and obviously the arm length is a concern there overall when it comes to uh, his ability maybe to stay on the outside mm-hmm. there. Those guys get kicked to guard, Alex. Those guys don't get kicked inside to center for a. Uh, l- let me, I've, I've been trying to toss around how I'm going to, which, which way I'm going, <laughs> going to talk about this and have, you know, make, make an interesting discussion about Alex. Why don't you see a lot of six, five, six, six centers in the league? It's usually they're long enough to play tackle and there's a premium, I think on offensive tackle. If you're a six, five, 310 pounder with 34 inch arms and you can move in college, you're playing tackle where there's a premium on your ability to move and block and work in space, defend the edge. And if you can do that, you know, we'll take, we'll, we can, we can get away with the lesser athlete, quote unquote, at center. That's a good point. Uh, and that's exactly the answer I, uh, I was looking for here. When you're talking about college kids, especially got, uh, kids that uh, aren't at, at, at the, 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 the right. top, top programs, Bama's, Georgia's, uh, if they're if they have any 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 size <laughs> to them whatsoever, those guys usually end up outside right. uh, at, at, at tackle uh, there. And yeah, you know, I suppose that was the case really with 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 Graham Barton outside of his freshman season there. But uh, uh, so yeah, 
Hey, uh, long story short, you don't get to see those guys at six, five, six, six place play center, uh, or, or really guard, uh, at the college level because they're, they're the big, they're the big kid. He's got to play mm-hmm. outside, uh, there. So that, that's, that's the first relevant reason here. And I would say a bit of a leverage thing too, when you're facing some smaller D tackles, you can be a bit, a bit of a leverage disadvantage with your six, five going against a six, two D tackle. That would be the second thing, especially at the NFL level here, mm-hmm. uh, Low man wins, right? Yep. Especially the 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 uh, uh, the further you get inside here, and especially over the ball, if you if you're having to play, you know, one of those kind of squattier defensive tackles, a guy that's and and those guys generally go six three ish or a little bit shorter, right? Yeah, the big you know nose tackle line up head up right. on you. You got to get under them and you know defend the point of attack. And the other reason. Uh, you generally don't see, th- and now look, there's like four centers in the NFL right now. I think that are six five or six six, but those guys I think were worse centers in college as well too, uh, and, and played a lot of snaps there as well too. So you know how that how how they how they are over the ball there. And the other aspect of this as well too, why you probably don't see a lot of six five six. Just one other reason uh, on top of the other two that you've already mentioned is if this kid was a six five six six uh uh tackle with shorter arms uh in college if they have any athleticism to them whatsoever those guys get kicked inside you know yeah look uh, at last year peter skronsky same thing left tackle left guard a little shorter moved inside the left guard for tennessee right and here's another reason uh 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 uh, these guys get kicked inside the guard. You need two of them. <laughs> yeah. And, and there is a, there, there's a bit of a guard tax, right? Uh, uh, you see some of these, what some of these guards around the league, yeah, it's obviously not as, not, not as heavy as the, 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 the tackle tax long, you know, I'm going to go to my key, key phrase here. Long story mm-hmm. short, uh, man, if you're an NFL team, especially in the, what do you think about this guard class? It's pretty poor overall. There's not many standout names. And one of the top names, Zach Center, was injured late in his Michigan career. So there are not many in terms of true guards, not to tackle conversion types. It is not a strong class. Uh, my my contention is that, I mean, I, look, I, I get why people want to want to put him inside at center and all like that. But, man, if, if he can't, if you think that this kid cannot be a tackle in the NFL, and and that is the consensus and he has the athletic profile that he has and you see it on tape not only at tackle but you know at center as well too why aren't you dra- in this in this class why why isn't he the top really why isn't he the top guard in this class it's fair um i, I think because he does have a center background makes it interesting there is some center snaps even though it was his freshman season 400 so, 400 some snaps i mean okay yeah it's not nothing it's 400 well, snaps. And, I mean. and they didn't stop the, the earth didn't stop spinning when i watched that tape either sure I, but my here's my point where did he work out at his pro day what position was he working at he's working at center we well, but we haven't seen the whole pro day though. I mean, we no, seen but we, bit, I mean, he was snapping. Teams. Sure, was, there, there were teams that probably want to see that. They want to know that the pro- position versatility is there. Yeah, and all, to me, all that really matters is what does Pittsburgh view him at. Yeah, the end. Of, some some team could view him as a guard, even though you know, even if they view him as a guard, guards don't typically go super high in the draft either. Like center, they tend to settle and fall a little bit. Uh, don't have the premium the tackles do. But all I all I care about is what does Pittsburgh view him as, and if they like him. They have to view him as a as a center. Or they they can't view him as a guard conversion guy. Right. Look, if this, uh, I'm I'm talking across the NFL. I think teams. I, I think there's potentially uh, more more than one or two teams out there that looking at Graham Barton as, as a guard, and and I think they should. Uh, sure. Obvious, obviously, if the Steelers draft him, they're uh, they're drafting him to play center. I, I'm not I'm not I'm not disputing that. Right. And, and to your I'm, point, yeah. I'm just saying where is probably the, this guy's best position uh, in the NFL landscape? Yeah, it, it, I mean, there. you're right. Maybe we should. I don't know why there has not been more discussion about him as a potential guard guy. But I will say, yeah, he's only played 430 snaps at center. But how many snaps at guard has he played? Zero. Right. So there's, right. there's even but, more but of a projection if, but if, there. 
Yeah, but I mean, you're at, you're asking him to uh, look. You, he's a guy you can get on the move. You can pull him. You can play the power game with him. You can do all all that kind of stuff with him, and not have him snap the football as part of the process and have to think about it. You know, uh, once again, if I it. If I have a guy at six foot five, three eight, three thirteen that moves like this guy does, and and has a, you know, uh, I mean, what are some of the guards? Uh, what are the, some of the, what are some of the arm lengths of some of the guards that are considered top in his class according to uh, uh, Brugler's? Let, let's let's go off. Uh, yeah, I Dane, don't have it Dane pulled up here. Brugler's range. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if some team viewed him as a guard, that'd be certainly reasonable. Uh, but does that change the landscape of you know what's in front of Pittsburgh? I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not arguing the aspect that the Steelers should okay. draft this guy as a guard. You're, you're miss. No, no, I, no. I, I wasn't saying I, that. I'm saying his market value as a first. I'm saying that that that's that adds to the potential of why Graham Barton could potentially be uh, the first of those three that we that everybody's pigeonholed together. Graham Barton, uh, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, and 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 Zach Frazier. Uh, uh, a, a good a nut, yet another reason why Barton would probably be the first one of those three uh, off the board. You look at some of the arm lengths of, of some of these guys. Now there are a few on here. If you go, you know, Font Fontenew has what thirty four and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morgan thirty two and seven eighths. Uh, BB, uh, who some people thinks underrated, thirty one and a half. What do we say Barton's is? Uh, uh, is he thirty two and seven eighths. I think he's right, right under thirty. Right, he's right, right there. I mean, so that's, I mean, that's, that's almost 33 inch, right? Yeah. The length is fine. No, what I was saying was, yeah, there's, there's, I wasn't saying that you're believing the Pittsburgh draft him as a guard, but is there a team in the top 19 that needs a guard that would view him as a guard? Has, is there a chance he could get snatched up by a team that views him as that? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there is. I hadn't looked at a, a list of guard needy type teams. Now, now here's the thing. I went down the rabbit hole of, as part of our talk today about, you know, I, I went way down looking at teams that might need, need centers specifically mm-hmm. uh i i have not looked deep at how many potential teams might need a guard uh later in the first look is, is a team probably going to take barton as a guard or a center for that matter in in the, in like the top 15 selections 16 selections yeah, yeah at least not top 10 just because of the talent that exists all the quarterbacks of offensive tackle so it's kind of like yeah it's really like 11 through 19 is anybody need a guard that could potentially theoretically take Barton to play guard. I don't know that, but I'll tell you this, the Dallas Cowboys need interior help, regardless of it's center or guard. I think. Uh, yeah. They lost B dash and they, they went nothing at center essentially. Right. 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 So, all right, that that's uh, the part of the hill that I, I, I hope to die on today is just sa- saying, don't be surprised if a team in the first round, drafts Graham Barton and calls you know, with the idea of playing him at guard. That's fair. That's fair. I, I guess the question is, is he on the board at 20? Because if, if he's, if he's there, then the whole, is he a guard? Is he a center? It, it goes out the window. It, it, Pittsburgh has to decide just whether or not they want to draft him or not. Two if, a, if a team drafts him before 20th overall, I think it is indeed to play him at guard. Would you agree okay. with that? It depends on the team, I, I but potentially it wouldn't shock me if some team said, let's play him at guard. I, it just depends on what they need. All right. Should, uh, I guess what you're asking is, do I think Graham Barton will be on the board at 20? I think he's still be, I th- personally, I think he'll still be on the board at 20. Okay. I think we agree. He'll be a first round pick. I think you mentioned that in our chat last night. He'll be a first round guy. Yeah. I, I think because, you know, uh, and once again, I, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole to see how many teams need 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 guards or whatnot versus center. But I did I, as the second part of this discussion, you know, I, I want to talk about the center position and I yeah. want to talk about specifically about teams uh, in the first two rounds, specifically uh, within the first 50 picks of this NFL draft that could potentially uh, uh, use draft a center. And boy, did I do some homework on this. Uh, if you look at 
and and all this, which is dangerous to to do, assumes every team, you know, no team trades back and trades forward and all like that. I think realistically, and I went team by team by team by team to look at the center position where they are financially. Uh, could you potentially see this team uh, or or that team draft a center? My takeaway is that on the surface, there are four teams that really seem to have a very legitimate chance of selecting a center somewhere within the first two rounds of the of, 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 of the 2024 NFL draft and ahead of the 51st overall selection owned by the Steelers. Uh, those four teams would be the Chargers, the Cowboys, the Packers, and the Buccaneers. Now, of those four teams, because look, I mean, Dallas, once again, I mean, if you look at their current draft chart, chart they have Brock Hoffman uh, as kind of their their top guy. Uh, and you look up who Brock Hoffman is. <laughs> there, th- yeah. there you go. And and how are they at, 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 at the other guard position as well, too? And, and the reason I bring that into play, because, you know, yeah, we uh, most people might have 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 Barton listed as a center. What they have listed as a guard, you know? Sure, sure. Uh, what do they have a guard? Yeah, they, I mean Tyler Smith had played guard, but I think he's going to be at left tackle because Tyron Smith isn't coming back. They got Zach Martin at right guard, but they got on the depth chart from our lads uh, T.J. Bass and Asim Richards, a fifth round pick last year. So they certainly could use a left guard. Right. So I mean, they could use a center or a guard, and why? Yes. Uh, why would? You know, if you're in that position, let's assume nothing happens with them in the next two weeks, which at this point, who who's even out there for them to uh, to sign to play center or guard that you could hang your hat on, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're Dallas and you have a guy sitting there in Barton that could potentially play either center or guard for you, why wouldn't that be your guy? It's a good question. What it depends on. What are their other needs? Are they do they need something else? Um, now I to, haven't gone. I haven't. Yeah. Had, I need. I, you're going to have to give me a year to come up with that. With, <laughs> but, with but the, that, all the teams' needs properly ranked in relation to their. Uh, uh, get. I'll, I'll give you the results after the draft. How about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll be 100 percent great. But they they pick behind Pittsburgh, right? They're 24, and so they're right. not a a quote unquote threat to take somebody like Barton ahead of Pittsburgh, unless they, of course, straight up. Right, right. Now, look, uh, my my contention with this is at 20th overall, the Steelers have a very good shot of of uh, picking any, any of those three, Barton, uh, Jackson Powers, Johnson, or Frazier. Uh, all three of those could legitimately still be on the board uh, mm-hmm. at, 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 at that point. Uh I'm still of the of, of the mindset that they're they they might go tackle overall. Uh, I, mm-hmm. uh, I I think we both agree that Frazier would be a little rich at 20th overall. Uh, you could obviously make arguments for them to go Barton or uh, talking about the Steelers here, uh, Barton or or Jackson Powers Johnson at at 20th overall. And I uh, you know we we would have to listen to those arguments, right? Uh, m- right. Basically. I, more of this study in, in my eyes was to do who might, uh, it, could any of those three fall to 51? Okay. And as part of that, I wanted to know is, 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 you know, who, who of these teams could potentially draft a cent, you know, one of these three guys within the first 50 picks of the draft. And I think Dallas is a prime. And, and even if they wanted to go more true center, Jackson Powers Johnson could be a guy that they had had their eye on there at what 24 overall there. So mm-hmm. uh I think the Dallas Cowboys are a huge threat. Uh in fact, there there's that run there at 24, 25, and 26 of Dallas, Green Bay, and Tampa mm-hmm. Bay that because you have uh Brock Hoffman at center for the Cowboys, you have Josh Myers, a former, what was he? Was he first or second round, Myers? I don't want to say he was like third round. Let me okay. check. Uh, any, anyway, they uh, he is in in his last year. Uh, now, look, of, of those three teams, Dallas, Green Bay, and Tampa Bay, I view the Packers as the less likely of the three to draft a, draft a center. But, they, but I don't think you can rule it out 
uh, when you kind of look at, at their need landscape roughly as well. Uh, Tampa Bay's got Robert Hainsey over there. And I, even though I liked Hainsey coming out of, out of Notre Dame, he's probably not going to be the answer uh, for them at center. Can I interrupt the center talk with some additional center talk, please? Sure. Uh, Myers, by the way, late second round pick. So you're right, late second round pick. Uh, pre draft visitors coming in for Pittsburgh today, according to Ray Fittipaldo. Center Zach Frazier from West Virginia. Now he's going to be a local visit, but Zach Frazier officially coming in. Also, fellow Mountaineer corner Beanie Bishop and Cooper DeGene is in from Iowa today. So Frazier, Bishop, and DeGene. All right. Uh, we, 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 uh, we had that report earlier in the off season that we thought Frazier was going to be in. And then the guy deleted the tweet, uh, uh, all like that. So, I mean, uh, do, do you have your shot face on that, that Zach <laughs> Frazier's in for a pre-draft visit? No, I didn't need the smelling salts for this one. And again, uh, I mean, he's, he, he's local, right? He doesn't even count right. against their 30. So there is no, uh, I don't want to say penalty, but there's no cost to bringing him in. All right. Uh, back, back. Uh, I mean, really no surprises there overall, right? Yeah, I don't know much about Bishop. That's one guy I'll have to, to learn. Okay. But again, he should be a local visit as well. Okay, back to uh, the the center talk here. Uh, there there is a good, there is a better probably than average chance that Dallas, Green Bay, or Tampa Bay uh, take one of Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson within there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, assuming the Steelers don't take one of those guys at, at, at 20. Yeah, certainly teams to watch for. Now, here's the thing. If 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 Green Bay decides that they don't, uh, Dallas's second pick in the draft is at 56 overall, and that's obviously behind the Steelers at 51. So if they bypass addressing one of those three players uh, in Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier, uh, they would have to trade ahead of the Steelers at 51, assuming that's when the Steelers, you know, uh, uh, won it. So 24 mm-hmm. is a key spot in the first round of this draft. Green Bay has a 41st overall pick. Mm-hmm. So if they went another direction at 25 overall, thinking, well, we think there's a good chance of Frazier or uh, Jackson Powers Johnson slipping out of the first round, they could still address that position at 41 overall. That becomes, I think, a key mark right there. 41st overall. Remember that number. Now, Tampa Bay, their second round pick is currently slated at 57th overall. So they're in the same boat as Dallas. If they did not address the center position at 26 overall, if they wanted one of those top three, in Barton, Jackson Powers, Johnson, or Frazier, they would probably have to jump to to at least fifty uh, uh, to do so. So if you're if you're scoring at home, that becomes kind of murderer's row, I guess, at at, at the center position at 24, 25, and twenty six. All this assumes the Steelers do not address that position at twentieth overall. Uh, if if all three of those guys uh, slip. Through through 24, 25, 26, it, it becomes a very interesting proposition. You get past all that. Uh, now, once again, you've got, I have identified. Now, look, you could probably make a couple arguments for the Arizona Cardinals uh, at, at 27th overall. Uh, and they also but the Chargers at 37. You mentioned the Chargers in that right, place. Right, right, right. And Chargers were one of the four, one of the four teams that I feel mm-hmm. – because now all the now they did go out and add Bradley Bozeman because they have Corey Lindsley uh, retiring and all like that. They went outside and Brad, uh, Bradley Bozeman, but that that contract super cheap. Uh, you you could envision him being a placeholder, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, thirty seventh overall is another key position uh, with, with within this. Uh, you know, this gets back in. Wh- where am I going with all this? Uh, I, I think the key component here of a guy, I don't think Jackson powers Johnson makes it to 51st overall. I have, I have tried to entertain the idea that that would happen, 
But the closer I get into this thing and the closer I look to at, 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 at other teams' needs and, and his talent and – I mean, when it comes to true, true, true centers in this draft, it, it it's probably him, right? Uh, that 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 would be number one guys that have actually played position a little bit most recently and all all like that. It's hard to imagine Jackson Powers Johnson slipping to fifty one. We have entertained both the thought of Frazier slipping to fifty one. Yeah, we've entertained it. Um, I guess the question is, if you're Pittsburgh, do you want to bank on it? Yeah, that that becomes the question uh, here. Um, If you did not go center, and here's the the second half of that study uh, that I did that I put up yesterday here, looking at kind of the an eight year history of the center position uh, overall historically. Now, look, you cannot rubber stamp these things from one draft to the other, right? Every draft Mm -hmm. is different and all like that. But uh, one of my one of my main, one of the initial takeaways here that I had uh, in here was that, where is it here? Uh, for starters, only six centers have been selected in the first rounds of drafts dating back to 2016. Uh, let's see, where was the other takeaway here? Uh, another interesting note about those eight second round centers drafted since 2016. Only three of them were selected before the 51st overall selection. Uh, let's see. As another main takeaway, since 2016, a span of eight NFL drafts, only nine listed centers have been selected within the first 50 picks of NFL drafts dating back to 2016. And once again, two of those nine players were essentially drafted uh, to play guard. One of those was uh, uh, Cesar Ruiz. And who did I say the other one was? Oh, James Daniels mm. uh, uh, with, 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 with the Bears there. Uh, because, you know, we've, at least me specifically, have always pushed kind of that narrative that you, 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 you see the center position get pushed down, right? Uh, overall, mm-hmm. uh, looking at other teams' needs across the league and kind of theorizing, it it's probably a 50-50 chance that Frazier survives to 51. Yeah, and again, if you're Pittsburgh, do you wanna, how lucky do you feel in, in terms of that happening? Right. So where would be the key area? Let's say they did not address the – Center position, say they went tackle, say they say they went uh, Mims or or or, 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 or something at twentieth overall. Where, how high up might this team have to go, and is it even feasible to go up that high to get? Let's say Frazier was your guy. I think I think the Steelers are very would be very comfortable with Frazier being their center. Would you would you agree? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one time? You, you, Pittsburgh being comfortable yeah. with Frazier Center? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yes. All right. Uh, and boy, you want to talk about people being mad in this fan base if if <laughs> if, if, if if they missed out on all three of those guys, right? Uh, Barton, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jackson Powers, Johnson, and and Zach Frazier. Do you think they'd have to go up to 36th overall? ahead of the chargers because that kind of seems like the top that that seems like it that would be the extreme realm of this yeah it's hard to say but i'd rather be a little too aggressive than not aggressive enough and miss out what would it cost you to go from 51 to let's say 36 I can pull up a trade value chart. And who I, who are, even owns 36? The commanders own 36, and you don't mm-hmm. have to worry about them taking a center because they took – they signed Biadiz during the right. offseason. And they also have a 40th overall pick, uh, the, the, the commanders do. The commanders pick second overall, 36th and 40th overall. So they have – Two second round picks. Might they and how many total picks do they do do the commanders have in this draft? I can check. It looks like potentially nine. All right. And they're not nine. going they're not going to they're 
what is the likelihood that they 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 come away with this draft with nine actual selections? Yeah, it's hard to say. It's a new regime, so they might want to hold on to their picks, but you will know, take a quarterback at two, you know. But but point taken, they may come away with seven or eight picks. What would it uh, What would it cost to go up to thirty six from well, fi- from fifty one? Roughly, yeah. I, I'm only going to hold hold you to this if you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, again, trade value charts have been new ones using the old Jimmy Johnson one I pulled up here. The math and the math alone would tell you one of your third round picks in terms of making the math work the best, probably 84. But I think realistically, you're not going to need to give up 84 to do that. Maybe 98. I think maybe you could try to, could you do something in the fourth round and maybe some sort of pick swap? I mean, teams have gotten really creative with those types of things. My guess is to do that. 98 i'd say 98 and maybe a pick swap or pittsburgh will bump up a couple spots in a later round they don't have a fifth right pittsburgh right yeah no fifth round pick i mean could you maybe get a a, a fifth back from them or something yeah let's see could you do what do they have what does washington that, have here the steelers are going to want to make seven at least seven picks in this draft right I mean, we mentioned since what 04, they've done it in all but one draft, and that was 2020 when they didn't have a first round pick in the Minka deal. Yeah, could you do? Does this sound reasonable? Pittsburgh gets 36 and 152, which is in the fifth round. It's the second of two fifth round picks that Washington has for what is it, 51 in 98? Well, they, they, uh, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, does that sound feasible? You tell me. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't like playing around with that end of the no it seems uh, reasonable to me uh i i don't spend in other words i don't spend a lot of time studying a draft trade chart because it's so you know you can go down so many rabbit holes i mean you tell me if they if you think that math works out uh isn't there doesn't arjan have that kind of new app or something that that allows teams to play around with with trade mm-hmm. values or something i haven't I, I see he has that. Man, there's a lot. There's so many great tools out there now. Imagine having some of these things back even five years ago uh, in, in in this process. Does that does that sound plausible, at least in your head, in, in, in looking at the trade chart? Yeah, I think it does. Again, trade charts, I'm looking at an older version. It's like there's new models and different numbers. and But but I think just, it, just how it sounds, what is that? Again, 36 and 152 for 51 and 98. That sounds you know, realistic and plausible to me. Yeah. You know, the only bad thing about it is you're letting loose of one of those third rounders, but at least you're getting, uh, you're, 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 you're getting a plug and play center out of it. And really yeah, you're right. getting, you're getting the most experience. Here's the other aspect of it. Uh, you know, Graham Barton had, what do we say? 400 something snaps way back in 2020 at center. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people don't, I mean, and look, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, his hit. There's nothing there. Uh, as a whole, there's nothing wrong with his center tape from last season, right? I mean, he he's he's a plug and play guy. Yeah, That's I mean, it. there's some critiques in his game, but I mean, yeah, sure. he's he's in, you know he's played center. He, you know, he's not a conversion type. Uh, right. Uh, here's the thing, though, with him, he was only a one year one year center starter in right. Oregon. A lot of how people, many how many starts does he have at center? Uh, uh, he, he only had. I wrote this up in one of the, one of the posts here. Uh, what does he have? Eight hundred and something snaps at center. Yeah, and how many snaps overall in his college career does he have? Because was he playing some guard before? Because he was more of a backup, and he kind of became a starter just this past year, right? Right. He has logged, uh, and a lot of people. This probably has gotten lost in the process here, and and it's because he was, you know. Uh, as good as he was last year uh, at Oregon at center, he's logged just 800. He he played, I think, a handful of snaps in other in in, in another year or two at center, and I added all those together. 837 total snaps in college at center over three seasons. Now, uh, here here's the caveat to it: he did play some center in high school. Okay, but for 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 whatever that's worth. Yeah, it's it's high school. <laughs> can I can I give you a, just another th- throw one out there for you? Could someone view Power Johnson as a guard? He's playing I, guard I, the year before. I entertained that when going down this rabbit hole, but at six foot three, three eights, uh, 
I, 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 I don't think there's going to be teams that envision him as, okay. as, 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 as a guard. I, I think the team that drafts him is is putting a C on that card with him. I think so, too. Just, I mean, he has played some guard before. He played 400-something snaps in 2022, played almost 100 snaps in 2021. I, I agree. I think he'll be a center, but just to throw some different ideas out there. Now, look, and normally when you look at centers drafted within the first first round of this draft, a lot of times, if you look back, most of these guys overall, except for who was the guy that I pulled out, Billy Price. Remember him? Uh, mm. mo- most of these guys in the first 50 or so picks of a draft that are drafted play center have well over, man, I got so much, too. I got too much data uh, here. <laughs> uh where do I have price listed? Like, it's like here. coming out of your ears. You got so much center. Yeah, center talk right I, uh, now. I'm going to. I'm going to even have to kind of search my own notes here, real quick. Here, uh, okay. Here it is. Uh, here is also something that I, I went. Whoa, this is going to turn into way too much information, people. But it, look, I've always viewed this show as me and you talking. <laughs> <laughs> if other people want to listen, let them listen. Uh, here's also something to think about when it comes to those. Uh, this this talks about the the uh, those six first round centers drafted since 2016. Here's another part of this thing. I'm going off of what the NFL media sheet said coming out of each one of these drafts as to how each player was termed at their position in the draft. Okay, so if you have issue. With me listing uh, Isaac Sayamalo as a center as part of this study, don't shoot the messenger here, all right? Mm-hmm. Because even if you go back and look at the live footage of that 2016 NFL draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select center Isaac Sayamalo out of Oregon State. Don't don't shoot don't shoot the messenger. Okay, everybody and their brother knew he was moving to guard, right? Right. But he started, uh, I looked it up, 23 starts at center at Oregon State, say Malu. Right, had. right. Uh, uh, but all right, back, 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 back to my nugget here. Something to think about when it comes to those six first round centers dra- uh, uh, since 2016. All but one of them logged at least 1,433 snaps at center in college. The only one who failed to achieve that college snap threshold was Billy Price who registered just 823 snaps at center in college. He, he's also been the least productive mm-hmm. of those six first first round centers since 2016. Yeah, he was a bad pick by the Bengals, right? He went to Cincinnati and right. did not work out there. Right. Not that not that you rubber stamp any of this across uh and and it it Jack Dutton Jackson have better measurables than, 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 than price did. I, I don't remember. I, I, I believe so. Uh, price was, price was a smaller guy. Like even just the frame, like Johnson or power Johnson has a thicker frame. I don't know what this he's heavier. He has to be heavier than price. Maybe uh, price was lengths. six foot three, six, six foot three, three quarters, mm-hmm. three Oh five, 32 inch arms, nine and three quarter inch, uh, hands. Yeah. Power Johnson weighed in. Three well over 300 pounds. What was his official weigh in at the combine? I'll pull it up here. He weighed in at 603, 328, or 32 and a quarter. So right. similar height length, but heavy, much heavier. Yeah, a little, a little heavier, a little shorter. Okay. Yep. Uh look, that that's not the that's not part of my argument. It's not part of a hill that I want to die on uh uh being Jackson, because I mean, the tape is the tape with Jackson powers. The tape is the tape with all these guys. But, Mm -hmm. uh, if you did have any concerns, it would be, well, he's, you know, he's not, even though he's the experienced at center more so than a Jackson powers Johnson and and more recent as well, too. Um, it's still less than a thousand snaps at at center in college. Now (laughs) you get into a guy like, uh, 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 Frazier, man. 2,606 snaps at center. That tape is that tape, brother. That, that, Mm -hmm. what you see is what you get with Zach Frazier. And it's not bad. What you see is what you get. Yeah. There is really no projection. I mean, there's always a projection, but there isn't any 
can he play center over the long term? I mean, he has played center his entire career, and he does a good job of it. And if you wanted one a, a, a center that could be plug and play, where there's almost, I mean, there's always going to be some project, pro- projection mm-hmm. and all like that. I mean, Zach Frazier is your guy, all right? Uh, where, where, where is all this, this lettuce here? Uh, for a while, I thought maybe Frazier could slide to five fifty one, and and I'm not discounting because I I think that murderer's row that we talked about with the Cowboys, the Packers, and 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 the Buccaneers right there, uh, really going to set up to to how far some of these guys fall. And even so, I could see one of these teams taking Barton off the board in the first round, even if it were at guard. I wanted to establish that as mm-hmm. well too. So I, I think the question – and look, even if Barton fell out of the first round, how far is he going to fall, right? Yeah, uh, not far. Uh, I think there is some consternation there to have as a Steelers fan to think for sure that one of those three would fall to 51. Uh, I think the most my, – my most plausible thing that I think we have – and what I wanted to do is talk this through with you here, uh, the second half of it here, which was – might the Steelers need to trade up to get a guy such as Frazier? And I think that's a plausible thing to do. And I think what we just said at that commander spot might be something to really, really think about if you're a fan of the Steelers here, assuming they don't take Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson at 20th overall. Yeah, no, it's great research. It's great study by you. I think there's, I, I think to me, the most value that I got, and I got value from all of it, but was that in-depth look at the other 31 teams and what they have at center or don't have at center. And there aren't a lot of teams as needy at center as Pittsburgh. The only the only other team that feels as needy as Pittsburgh is Dallas. Because even Green Bay, because Josh Myers has been a decent center for them. He's what, in the last year of his contract, though, on his rookie deal? He's been serviceable. Okay. You could get by with him another year. Uh, look, you could go if, if you're Green Bay. You could go get a guy like uh, uh, Van Granger in the middle rounds, maybe to right. to, to to back 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 uh, Myers up, and even put maybe push him. And then obviously, if you did not hit with 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 uh, uh, Van Van Granger, uh, you go into next year's draft saying or free agency saying we got to go get a center. Yeah, or move Zach Tong because he's played everything because they need a left tackle, right? They don't. I mean, Bakhtiari's finally done. Like their their O line right. concern, I think, is tackle. Right. That's why I I said of those four teams, I view Green Bay as probably the less likely right. to 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 get a center at that spot. But uh, I it would have it would have been bias on my part to let ones to to say that they did not need one. Sure. No, I get that. I'm just trying to think about, okay, who is the most needy team alongside Pittsburgh? And it feels like Dallas. And the good news is Dallas picks behind Pittsburgh in each round, but you do watch out for them at 24. Pittsburgh does not take a center and see what they do there. I wonder what, have they been bringing in the centers for visits? Have they brought in Barton for a visit? I hadn't checked any of those. Uh, Didn't Ross, didn't uh, uh, CBS sports just, and I don't know how accurate this is. So uh, I'm going off someone else's information here. Uh, Dallas has, according to CBS sports with, with what they've been compiling, they have brought in, uh, Oh, wow. Fought new, uh, Gone Claves, who kind of projects, I think a lot of people projected him as a guard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson and Graham Barton. Okay, so clearly doing their work on interior type guys in this class. And they should. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I really, really wonder, Alex, if that's the spot that Barton goes to. And they say, absolutely. Ab- and, and they say, Whatever he is, he is. If 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 he can mm-hmm. play guard, fantastic. We'll figure out center. If if center is his best spot, we'll figure out the guard spot. Because they need both. Because I right. assume Tyler Smith will kick back out the left tackle. Tyron Smith done. It seems like not in Dallas anymore. And so that opens up holes at center after losing Biadesh and at left guard. All right. No, let's. I I don't want to go down another team's needs too deep but but what are kind of their needs i mean we we they need interior interior help 
Yeah, uh, that, it was like number one. Uh, what what are some of their other draft needs that you can loosely maybe identify? Um, they did not do much in free agency. That was the thing. Like they really right. have a lot of needs because they were very they were probably the least active team in free agency. I'm trying to find it would be a site that can show some team needs. Uh, I, I mean, just have... just just look at their look at their uh, depth chart real quick on our lads here. I okay. mean, that, uh, I'm running back. They, they're they in the talk maybe one of the top running backs in round, not round one, but round two, because they lost Pollard and you know, Zeke's been gone. So Jonathan Brooks has been connected to them quite a bit. I mean, we agree off if they if they, if they go offensive line in that first round, it's going to be an interior guy, right? It's not going to be a tackle. Yeah, I think that's, that, that's accurate. They're probably not going to draft a wide receiver in round one. Uh, Yeah, I mean, they could use somebody. It's a deep class, but yeah. Probably less likely. All right, they're not going to draft a quarterback. Blah blah blah. I mean, uh, on on if they if they dedicate that pick, uh, what do we say it was twenty fourth overall? Mm-hmm, uh, if if they dedicate that to offense, it's probably going to be an interior center or guard, right? Yes. All right. What about defense? I know there's yeah. all this stuff about uh, Parsons. I'll I'll believe all that crap when I see it. You know. Yeah. I mean, could they do something in the secondary? Maybe it's safety. Maybe it, yeah, they had Bland and Diggs, probably not a corner that early. Could they go? I think it's Jordan Lewis. Yeah, maybe a safety. I'd probably say running back, safety, interior O line, probably be top, the areas for them top, to hit. Top three needs. Yeah, again, this is Steelers Depot giving, opining on Cowboys' needs. Maybe wrong, but that's kind of my my glance at it. That That's really mine as well, too. And really, I mean, you look at interior there with Hoffman and Bass. I mean, that uh, that sticks out. Bad. Yeah, they could go interior in the first two picks, take a center and a guard. Right, right. They 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 really could. All right. So uh another long story short here, they and if they did not address that with uh Barton, I it it just it really feels like one of those guys is coming off the board there to him. Barton or 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 uh Jackson Powers Johnson to me. Yeah, yeah. That- Certainly would make a lot of sense. Can I, let me ask you one more kind of center draft related question. And this may be even more difficult to determine. What is the history of the tackle moving the center? How many of those guys have happened, have made that transition in recent years? I think I always think about Cody White here. He was a undersized tackle at Kansas State. He kicked inside the center. He's played some guard. I think more recently played guard, but starting his career, he was drafted to become a center for the Bears. Wonder how many other guys share that story. I, I don't think you see. I you know I that's why another yeah it's right. That's why Barton such been such a interesting thing because normally you see the guards kick inside, you know, to center if they're too small or that you know that 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 kind of thing there. Uh, I I I don't know the answer to that. I, I will tell you this: when you get it, how soon we forget. Uh, and talking about Barton, remember last year, Cody Mock? Yeah, North Dakota State, no teeth, fun guy. Right, a guy that played tackle at uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in, in BSU, right? Uh, yep. A guy that went into the senior bowl, everybody talking about, boy, how many positions can this guy play? And and even got some work at center. And, and you know, I, I, I know even a few of us thought, man, could, could Cody Mock be a center for the Steelers? But mm-hmm. be, but because of his size, where where was he drafted? And where, where you know, what position is he in the NFL? Yeah. Uh, to, to me, that's a, uh, even though it was a lower level school and all like that, I mean, the, the talent was still there. The size was still there. It just goes back to my argument. You know, you see these six foot five guys that can move and 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 can play. You got you got to if you can do it, you got to put that guy at guard. Yeah, again, I don't disagree. I don't know why there's not been at least some discussion about moving Barton to guard. There's nothing that really tells me that he couldn't do it or isn't worth the look at it. I just don't know how it changes the calculation for Pittsburgh, especially if, okay, Dallas is a threat, but they're behind the Steelers, barring a trade up. I mean, they're not necessarily going to be the team that that takes away Graham Barton. The the threat is, my takeaway of all this, the threat is that Dallas is going to take one of Barton or 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 Jackson Powers Johnson at that in that first round. Right. Which but then the question is which okay, at, at first who, I was, you know before going deep into this thing, I had all these delusions of of, of grandeur that uh 
maybe all three of those guys fell out of the first round. Okay. Uh, I mean, to, to me, if you're Pittsburgh, let's say you pass on center at 20, you understand not all three are going to be there at 51. The question is, will one of them be there at 51? You know, Frazier, Powers Johnson, or Barton. And and that and going back to one of your early mocks, right? And 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 look, I have and so have you. We have both entertained the idea of Frazier falling falling to 51. But I think as a result of me doing these exercises, uh, especially with now, look, if Graham Barton was a slam dunk sender, uh, maybe that changes the conversation a little bit. But with him having guard, in other words, I have talked myself because remember we had that talk about, you know, or at least I did, is, is Graham Barton being overrated, underrated, mm-hmm. and all like that. I have flipped back to the side now of Graham Barton's right where Graham Barton should be, a first-round candidate. I agree. I mean, I think he will be a first round pick. I, I wonder, do you think the order of the guys go Barton is the first one taken of the three, him, Power Johnson, and Frazier? Does it go Barton, Power Johnson, Frazier? It feels like it. I wonder if it'll be, I think Barton will be the first. I'm pretty confident in that. I wonder if there's a chance Frazier could go over Power Johnson. If there are some concerns about the lack of experience overall relative to Frazier from Power Johnson, some of the injuries that Dane Brugler brought up. I wonder if there's a chance that Frazier could be next off the board. And it goes Barton, Frazier, Powers Johnson. It's that's plausible, especially if both, if both those, you know, what, 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 you know, how does Tampa view both of those? In fact, who did Tampa, does CBS have who, uh, Tampa Bay listeners, we apologize. We've gone <laughs> way, way down, but you know, uh, either, either you've turned this thing off or you're still, yeah, listening if you're still and, here, you're you know, committed. Uh, it does not. Now, look, once again, we're going off of a list that we did not cobble together. According to CBS and the pre-draft visitors, look, here's the thing. Uh, if you look at technically at this list, oh God, I'm, we're going down rabbit. We're finding rabbit holes mm-hmm. off of, off of rabbit holes here. Uh, according to the CBS list here, the Cowboys brought in Jackson powers, Johnson, uh, the, who else brought him in? Yeah, that's a good question. Who's been bringing him in? He's uh, had the, a bunch of visits. The Steelers brought him in. Mm-hmm. And the bears brought him in. Remember Chris Morgan. There was, and here's the other thing I went mm. research here. Let's let's. <laughs> we're, we're, they went, I swear. Uh, they watch uh, draft like Van Pern Granger and just all of this becomes moot. I hope you tied a rope to me because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to get me out of all these holes. It's going to be tough. Need uh, a but, shock collar on Dave. Uh, for uh, some of these. The other uh, thing I went back and looked at is who was that? Who was at that Oregon pro day? Chris Morgan mm-hmm. was at that pro day, right? Yeah, and were the Chargers you, at that pro day too? Didn't uh, Chargers? Not the offensive yeah. line no. coach that I remember. At least okay. it, I, I don't think it was reported there. Maybe uh, a different school. But those there was very limited teams that brought in Jackson Powers Johnson for for a visit. Not that not that that's the end all do all. We don't know how teams do their visits and what that means in relation to to draft stock. But there weren't there weren't a lot of teams to bring him in. He was just on with Kay Adams. He made mention something about visits, but he didn't. I don't know if he said the teams, but okay. I well, you're gonna you're gonna have to find that uh, yeah. now, now because I I did not know that existed uh, there. Find that for me and let's listen to that. I mean, he didn't say anything. I, he didn't say mention anything about Pittsburgh. I know that, and I, I think he just made a general comment to doing a lot of traveling. But I mean, does that mean three places? Does that mean ten places? I I'll, I'll double check. I don't know if he said anything super interesting, though. All right. And as far as Barton goes, uh, Dallas, uh, Chicago brought him in. Okay, Chicago's doing a lot of work on interior guys. So we got to look at Chicago and where they're picking in the draft. And obviously, uh, uh, those, those, well, here's the thing with Chicago. Uh, and I put this in, in, mm. in one of those breakdowns. They have the fear with them is them trading out of nine. Right. Right. That's, they about, that's where but, it gets messy uh, with them. However, co- comma. Uh, hold on here. Let me pull. Let me jump back, back, back post here. Uh, what I wrote. Your about computers. Just, the hamsters in your computer have to be running over. Oh, man. I got a lot of RAM, brother. 700 uh, tabs. Uh, they had they owned the number one and number nine pick. And. 
How many total picks do the Bears have in this draft? Uh, it's looking not like, a lot, right? Ooh, yeah, it's only they got one nine seventy five. Is that it? They got 122. Four, I think. They got yeah, one nine seventy five and one twenty two. So They're, nine they, is a good chance to trade down, get some capital. Right. Uh now here's the thing. Uh they went out and acquired Ryan Bates via a trade, and they had they had evidently had their eye on Bates for a while to hear uh them talk. And they talked also about uh Matt uh Eberflus said it's very important for a young quarterback to have that center experience, to be able to call and make adjustments to project uh, protections, to help and assist that way. We thought it was critical to get that piece. And Ryan Bates fits that bill. We're excited to have him. He's been a long, uh, he's been a pro a long time, and he's moved along the line inside there at Garden Center. So it's good to have the position flexibility as well. But yeah, that's a critical piece for sure. Uh, Eferblis said, uh, and the Bears only have, uh, you know, now. When when did they acquire Bates? What what date was that on? And was that after the Jackson Powers Johnson Pro Day? No, uh, March fourth they traded for Bates. So before the Powers Johnson okay. Pro Day. All right. So they st- they still sent Chris Morgan out 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 west after that. Uh, that that's something that. And once again, I said that at the top of this thing was. Man, I you, you want to get into teams trading out of positions and all like that. It mm-hmm. gets real messy then. You know, could they feasibly trade out of nine and pick up a pick? To me, once again, it becomes the magical spot. They would have to trade to that commander's spot or, or at least get get to that spot somehow at 36 overall to maybe ensure themselves a guy whoever drops, let's say either Frazier or, 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 or Jackson powers Johnson. Well, they would you know, be a first round deal. They might go down from nine to, I don't know, making up numbers. Minnesota's pick. What does Minnesota have? 23, 23. Yeah. What if they did something like that? And they take Barton or powers Johnson sure. at 23. I mean, sure. there's a million possibilities there. Right. It, it's interesting though. Yeah. For a team that has one nine and 75 and like not a lot of glaring needs, they have Bates, they, Sign Coleman Shelton. They have Nate, Nate Davis at right guard on a on a deal. Why are they doing so much homework on these, you know, late first round, early second round interior linemen? Right, right. Kind of interesting. Um, they're not in really position ostensibly to to take those guys. Are they uh, planning to potentially take those guys or uh, trade down possibilities? All right, uh, we have probably spent way too long of time on this, but you knew it was going to be a hot button of mine to discuss the center. Uh, here's here's my kind of takeaway from this. Mm-hmm. I'm less positive now than I was in our last show that all three of those guys will be there on the board at 51. Yeah, I'm sure I'd be shocked if all three were. The question is, I mean, if one, if, of if one of the three is what I mean. Oh, one of the three. Yeah. My stance has basically been the same. I think that this only furthers it, though, is that if you're Pittsburgh, you bypass center in round one. Okay, I get it. You got to make a play for a center in round two. You got to make a move up, and yeah, there's a cost and other positions. But if you, if you, it's it's a it's a big gamble to hope and and think one of those guys will be there at 51. All right, unless whoever you have, whoever the Steelers might have, let's say those three of their top three uh, uh, guys at center, uh, who who would. Who would be the who would be the ejection seat? I mean, who would be the break glass in case of emergency center pick if all three of those guys were gone? Yeah, it's a situation. I hope this team does not find themselves in. I mean, if if it's not them, I mean, there is there is some depth at center. It's not a bad class, but are you going to count on that third, fourth round guy to be your day one guy? Now you talk about Van Pran Granger from Georgia. You have Norzad from Penn State. Um, I'm a big fan of Matt Lee from the U previously central Florida. Uh, there's other names. Oh, I'm Bordellini. sure to Tanner Bordellini from Wisconsin. Although I think he's had some snapping issues at center. Do you want to go down that road again? Um, I mean, there are names, but again, do you, then you're in the Kendra green standpoint to me, of uh, just a guy that probably should not be day one ready or you know, ushered in as the starter being anointed as the starter, or you have a Bordellini versus her big camp battle at center. 
which is not my favorite thing for a new offense, new OC, new quarterback, veteran quarterback, trying to make all that work. That scares me. Uh, and I said this early in the show, this fan base is going to be hot if they don't come out of the, uh, come out of the early rounds of this draft without, with, 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 without one of Barton Jackson powers, Johnson or Zach Frazier. Yeah. And, and they should be, I think reasonably it'd be, it'd be a concern. What did Tomlin say during, do we have exact quotes of what Tomlin said about the plug and play nature? Do we ever get a full quote from the league meetings on that? I'll have to go back and see what he said, but um, he had said, this is a paraphrase, but after a couple centers in the draft, it will likely not be plug and play was Tomlin's comment during the league meetings in March. All right. So, and that, that even assumes they consider Barton a plug and play. Yeah, which, you know, who knows? But my point is, I mean, if, if we take that and they need a plug and play guy, I don't know how they could not come away without, you know, a Zach Frazier type in this draft. All right. Uh, the hills that I'm dying on today, uh, I think Graham Barton, if there's one team that takes him as a center, as a true center, it might be the Cowboys. Uh, don't be surprised if maybe another team takes him in the first round as a guard. Uh, cause you just don't waste that on the center position historically, uh, is one of my hills that I'm dying on there. The second hill that I'm dying on is I'm not, I'm now not totally convinced all three of those guys, Bart Jackson powers, Johnson, or Zach Frazier, make it to 51. I think it's very plausible to think that the Steelers, if they bypass the center position at 20th overall, they are probably going to have to need to trade up into the second to get. Zach Frazier or and or Jackson Powers Johnson, not and you. or or. Yeah, I think that's the play overall. So, any final thoughts? I think that sums it up well. Really good research. I know it's a lot of time on center, but it is this team's biggest need. It's the thing we're going to talk about probably the most coming out of the draft in terms of who they got or didn't get and how it all shook out. And so, I think it's important to dedicate a lot of time to the conversation. I agree as well. Hopefully, the listeners do as well. Let us know. Did you hate or love us? going down all those rabbit holes and spinning. How long did we spend on that conversation? Uh, 45? 45 minutes. Yeah. All right. What else do we have to talk about, Alex? Uh, kind of wrapping things up here. I do want to note 13 players are attending the draft. It's a lot of standard fair names, the quarterbacks, the top receivers, et cetera. Um, only one offensive lineman in JC Latham, although reportedly from PFT, Joe Alt declined an invite to the draft, which is not uncommon for offensive linemen. Remember Joe Thomas on his boat, not going to the draft all those years back. Uh, the, the most interesting thing to me about about who is going is Darius Robinson from Missouri, one of the 13 guys going generally that not always, but generally that the NFL invites guys who they strongly believe will be first round guys. You don't have the whole long green room wait and day two. It's happened in the past, but I think the NFL is being smarter about it in, in recent years. So Robinson looking like a first round pick. Wow. Uh, and I would have to think that's a team that thinks he can get after the passer. I mean, right. Uh, that one and a. One of the things about him is he, I, I wish, I wished he was a little bit heavier. You know, I, I wish he had more sense. I, I wish he was more of that uh, three, four, I techish, you know, but he's got his, his ability and it's not a bad thing in his case is going to end up probably helping him is the fact that he does have that bend that he does have that pass pass rush uh, prowess that, you know, there are some teams that probably can, 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 can look at him as a, as, as, as a four, three end, you know? Yeah. And again, he's probably heavier last year I mean, in 2022, he's playing D tackle and then he kicked out the end and probably dropped some weight. So I, I think he has the frame to add if a team wanted him to add weight and bulk back up. Yeah. He's uh he's an impressive dude. I just don't think he fits ideally what the Steelers might need him to do. Mm hmm. Yeah, but that was the one name that felt a little of the non-slam dunk first round picks. The rest of them are Malik Neighbors and you know Dunze and the quarterback. So uh, that was kind of the outlier, so to speak. And I think Mike Florio wrote something about they, they the NFL wanted fifteen guys there and two guys declined. Uh, and I know Jackson Powers Johnson was asked during his pro day if he was going to be there, and he said he doesn't he doesn't look that he don't look he don't look that good in the suit anyway. <laughs> and he was just going to watch it from home or whatever and all like that. Who were the two that declined? Alt was one. Who was the other? Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers. The other oh, one that okay. declined. So yeah, he already knows where he's going. Where's he going? Cincinnati. Bengals? Jets. Okay. All right. We'll see.
I think I've, I've said that since day one, yeah. he's going he's to yeah. end up uh, in, 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 in Cincinnati there. Okay. What else do we have to talk about Alex? I think it's probably time to start wrapping things up, get through some reader emails and close out today's show. Uh, Levi Walls visiting the Broncos. Mm. That's not, you know, pe- people say good. Uh, I think would mostly be the reaction there. Uh, what did Armand Watts say? Oh yeah. Armand Watts um, said that Pittsburgh showed interest in him, but the Patriots showed Excuse me, more interest in him. Does that mean financially? It would have probably appear so. Um, <laughs> yeah. But what Watts uh, yeah, said that Pittsburgh had some interest, but ultimately New England was his next place to go. I, I don't doubt that the Steelers wanted him back, but the Steelers probably wanted him back on a veteran benefit deal, and he got a little bit more than that with the pay- Patriots. So what did, what did Mon Adams get? Two years, five, six million? What did he get? Uh, Two years, six million? Five million, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. That deal ended up being... Uh, five point two five million. Got to imagine they probably offered Watts the same structure and just gave that to Mon Adams when Watts said, "I'll take a three million from New England instead." Possibly, my guess. He might guess. Anyway, he's in New England now. Pittsburgh signed Dean Lowry because I'm well, actually what did Dean Lowry, Lowry he signed for two years? Five million. Five and a half. Uh, Lowry was very similar. Let's see, two years, five million. Yeah, that has to be right around what they offered. Armand Watts, a two-year deal mm-hmm. worth five to five point two million, and Watts, I'll take the one-year deal for three million from New England. Right, right. All right, okay. reader emails and close out today's show. All right, I'm interested in what the listeners think about uh, today's r- rabbit. Watch hole. them just not take any of these centers and just take you know somebody in the third, fourth round. Let's just watch that be the outcome of this whole thing. All right, Brett Now Glover question. Uh, I know there's PTSD about Kendrick Green, but I think it's important we learned the, the right lesson. The mistake was drafting Green not to move to uh, not not to move to center. He was equally inept at guard as he was center. His failure uh, should not be taken as an indication that it can't be done either by Barton or or even Herbig. It may not work out either case, but green should not be used as a reason. It won't, uh, look, uh, my contention about Barton, uh, as I stated early in this show is that I, with that size and all that he has and the tape and all like that, his teams ought to be looking at him as guard. He says, remember that when Dawson retired, they brought in Jeff Hardings, blah, 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 moved him to center. Uh, they may, 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 may remember, but for a couple of years before injuries derailed him, that was a great combination of Hardings, Fanica, and Smith. Uh, the team has a lot of interest in Glover, and Alex thinks he would do well to kick inside the guard. My question is, is does he have the traits to kick into center? Could they be looking at him as, cent- as a center conversion? Obviously not day one ready. Uh, basically, this, this is about Glover. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you've he's... watched more of him than I have. Yeah, he's not going to be a center. He's not bendy enough, and there's going to be a leverage issue. Even a guard, there could be a leverage issue. I just don't think he had the functional lateral athleticism to play left tackle. He's got you know length and size and uses it well, but he gives up the edge uh, against those speed guys uh, too often. Got to work on his punch, and so that's why I thought he'd try to kick inside the guard. But no, he's not a center. And even, even if he was, again, as, as the reader acknowledged, he's, he's not day one ready. I mean, with Herbig, you know, could he do it? Maybe, but do you want do you want to do you want to bank on that? Do you want to put all your all your chips into the Nate Herbig? You know, guy's been a career guard. It's not like he's a rookie coming out and can learn the position. I mean, he you know took reps last year, but I mean, is that your plan? Is that you know? I'm not I'm not trying to sound so uh, luxury, but just talking to Pittsburgh, not to the to the reader. But is that your plan for Nate Herbig to hopefully be the guy? Yeah, I'd much rather have him be in the backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he ends this real quick. Love your work and can't wait for the Dave T Memorial draft round tables to start. And, you know, we've had a couple other people. I think we failed to get to their emails, but I've come across them that mention, Hey, uh, uh, remember the old days with Dave T it is appropriate time in this thing right now, uh, to remember Dave T and all the great times that we had with Dave T on this show. And, uh, man, I, I, you know, I, I, I miss those Alex, mm-hmm. uh, uh, give them one name, get five back. Uh, <laughs> well, I'd mean, love to know his thoughts on Graham Barton in the center. Oh guard conversation. yeah. I, I, you know what? He, he'd probably be in the camp of, of, of plug and play him at center. I, I, yeah. I can, I can envision Dave, Dave T saying that, you know? Uh, but yeah, I think it's appropriate time to, man, Dave, Dave T really provide a lot of great content. 
uh, overall and uh, uh, throughout the years and specifically on our show. So shout out uh, uh, to Dave T. Uh, Matt Palmer writes in, Hello, Dave and Alex. If we could pretend we were in a draft room and Khan swivels his chair towards you and says, Dave, you tried to tell us about George Kittle and Alex, <laughs> you tried to tell us about Jonathan Jones and we didn't listen. Mm. Uh, who is your guy this year? Who is the guy, Alex, that uh, that 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 you said you better go get this guy? I don't know if I have some of the draft crushes this year I've had in years past. And yeah, I, Jonathan Jones was one of those uh, hits that I had, but I, I think one guy that I'm a lot higher on that it seems like the NFL, at least based on what the draft Knicks say, and we'll see how draft weekend plays out. Uh, maybe not for Pittsburgh ultimately, but Brandon Coleman from TCU, the left tackle guard, big, strong, physical, and nasty. He can play tackle. I think he's ideally best at left guard. Played well against watch the Michigan game in 22 and their playoff run, a great game there. So I think he could play a tackle, but you put him a left guard. That dude's going to be a stud. People are projecting him to be a day three guy, fourth, fifth round. I put a second round grade on him all day. That guy's going to be a stud left guard for whoever takes him. Uh, I, I don't have that kind of guy, you know, that I'm nailing myself to really overall. But man, I tell you that Mike Sanders still, I am intrigued by that kid. Uh, just all that you can do with him in a defense, the physicality for the guy, for a guy his size, his ability to cover. Uh, I mean, he's, and normally for me to go after a five foot nine, three mm. eights guy is rare, you know? Uh, I'm just, I, I will say this. I am very, very intrigued. And the deeper I get into Andrew Phillips, and I think Dane Brugler, Brugler brought this up during a recent podcast interview somewhere on the internets. Uh, and don't sleep on Andrew Phillips that, you know, and it's rare for me to go corner too. You know, that's, that's normally not my hot spot, uh, overall, uh, w- when it comes to this thing. So I, I think those are two guys that I'm, 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 I'm not nailing myself to the cross too or whatnot, but I, I, I find them very, very, very intriguing uh, overall. Yeah. What did Brugler say? He didn't think Phillips would get out of the second round. Is that what he said? I think, I think that maybe be what was what he said. Yeah. I mean, I, I viewed him as a day two guy. I know Jim Nagy talked about him. Just wonder, he lacked production. Well, had like 10 pass breakups the last two years combined, zero interceptions. There were some penalty issues. I don't have a firm place on whether or not I'm thumbs up or thumbs down on Andrew Phillips, but uh, we would have liked to see some more production, but this guy played a ton in the slot. I think it was a top 10 corner across all of college football last year in slot snaps. Pittsburgh brought him in for a visit. If it's not Sandra still, if they wanted a bit more size overall, I could see Andrew Phillips. Certainly I was thinking third round, but now you think about, okay, will he actually get to 84? Yeah, I was entertaining that thought uh, of of him kind of sliding on into a little little bit mid round, if you will. But now, the deeper get into this stuff, and you hear some of the buzz about him, and you do kind of wonder might Max Melton end up having to be that guy? Yeah, which would also, I mean, or will it be any slot corner again? Something's got to give here with all the needs. They cannot address everything within the top four picks, and so I wonder, barring a trade back what will be getting the short end of the straw. And as usual, the deeper you get into this thing too, and you all the buzz two weeks ahead of the draft, you have a hundred players going in the first 50 picks. <laughs> right. Guys will fall. Receivers are going to fall. Tackles are going to fall. Quarterbacks are going to push guys down. And they're going to be some, some great players going late first round, early day two, because of the depth and the quarterbacks that will inevitably just push down some of these top names. All right, uh, Stu McPherson from New Zealand, new name. I don't remember seeing before uh, about chat GPT. He said, just a tip. You can use chat GPT to help answer some curly questions you have. I used it to answer the question of when the Steelers traded down in the first round. He says results. Uh, the Steelers have traded down in the first round of the NFL draft a few notable times. He says the 1970 NFL draft. They traded their first round pick 21st overall to the Green Bay Packers in the exchange they received. Now, I have not fact checked this. I'm, I, we're, we're taking chat GPT for, for, uh, as a source here. Uh, for uh, traded down, received a third round pick and linebacker Leroy Caffey with the acquired pick. Pittsburgh selected defensive tackle Ron Shane. 
Ron Defensive Schenk, tackle? Yeah, he's, he's, wide got, yeah I mean, he's a wide receiver, but he's got, I don't know if Ooh. he mistyped this or what. But uh, I'm guessing that just chat TV, or the, the chat GBT misquoting it. And I'm not seeing anything on, on Wikipedia that uh, that notes a trade. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but he, he says that. 1970 draft. He says the Steelers traded their first pick 21st overall to the Green Bay Packers. Are you seeing any of that in Wikipedia? Wait, Green Bay was you said Green Bay was picking at 21 uh, when they, they traded up. And he said this is traded down. Yeah, Pittsburgh traded from 21 to 28 with Green Bay. Is that what he said? Uh, I guess he says it received a, a 2007, uh, uh, a 1970 third round pick. Okay, because Green Bay did not pick a 21 that year. Cleveland picked a 21 that year. So may not be accurate. Does not appear to be accurate. The second one he has is 1987 NFL draft. Uh, the Steelers moved down in the first round. They traded their 10th overall pick to the San Diego Chargers, attaining the 16th overall pick and additional selections in, le- in later rounds. With the 16th pick, Pittsburgh selected cornerback Rod Woodson, who became a Hall, Hall of Famer. Uh, research that. He said the 16th pick? He said they traded their 10th overall pick to the San Diego Chargers in 1987, attaining the 16th overall pick. Hold on. That does not seem right. Uh, Woodson went 10th overall. I think I think ChatGPT is giving you some really bad information there, my friend. All right, Stu. Uh, that's why you got to be careful here when using ChatGPT. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. Thanks for the email, though. Uh uh, Val, uh, Val, 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 Ali Ford writes in, Hey guys, love the podcast and all that you do for Steeler Nation. An idea for a draft trade, draft, draft day trade keeps staring me in the face from the endless mock drafts and mountains of draft analysis. The Green Bay Packers are an excellent trade partner for some NFL style. Let's make a deal. The Packers need a new left tackle. They're rebuilding their line and have Tom and Walker at the tackle positions. This is a great opportunity for the Steelers to unload Dan Moore and clear the left tackle position to allow Jones to move into his more comfortable position with the loaded draft class along the offensive line and receiver. There's great value, blah, 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 at the end of round one, throughout round two. But the 20th pick in round one and the 51st pick, in round two, the Steelers could make an additional trade with Green Bay. He says the Steelers pick 20th. Uh, uh, get, let's see. The Steelers pick 20th and 50, 51st with Dan Moore. The Packers pick 25th and 41st third round pick 88. This would allow the Steelers to pick up some draft capital. Boy, this is it, it is hard to follow uh, the alley. Uh, and you're including Dan Moore in there. We've been asked about Dan Moore. Uh, I, I, I understand all the stuff and, 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 and the scenarios of Dan Moore, but man, it just, it seems unlikely they're going to move Dan Moore regardless of what they do in the draft. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned green Bay needing a left tackle, but they could just go draft a better left tackle than right. trading for Dan Moore. Uh, they got Rashid Walker. There's maybe a little closer to Dan Moore status. So, I mean, again, you could come up with a million different scenarios, um, I think if something more happened with Dan Moore, it'd be late, it'd be camp thing, uh, you know, post post cut late August when you have a proven swing guy, say a Dylan Cook or somebody else emerges. I don't think they're going to trade Dan Moore on draft night. All right. One more for from Lenny Barsikowski writes in Dave, would you or Alex be upset if we repeated last year's draft pattern? Because I could almost see it happening again. First round offensive line, second round cornerback, third round, D line. Secondly, while I understand trading Deontay, if we draft a cornerback to play outside and he has Wiggins in parentheses, what was the point of getting Jackson in return from Carolina? He says, I really like Omar, but this was not a good trade for us. I also agree with you that the Steelers blew it in not signing that center out of Buffalo, uh, Mitch Morse. If we end up having to trade up in round two, every team in the league knows who we're coming to get parentheses he has Frazier Dave when will you release your first mock draft my first and only mock draft will be uh can I release it after the draft <laughs> <laughs> I know you could uh, if you would uh it'll be coming up soon Lenny uh second uh is it unthinkable the Steelers go offensive line first round corner second and D line third no I don't think that's unplausible is that a word 
It is now. No, it, it certainly is. Uh, just two other names. And is it O line? Is that tackle? Is that center? If it's tackle, where's your center? Uh, but no, the, the layout is not unrealistic. What do you think about his statement about secondly? While I understand trading Deontay, if we draft a cornerback to play outside, what was the point of getting Jackson to return from Carolina? Uh, he, he he does not like that trade still. He also agrees. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, I I think they probably thought Morse was maybe they probably thought they're going to get a done a deal done with Morse. Yeah, but they were trying to get a cheaper term to not have to lock him at lock him in as the starter, and I don't think those were terms that Morse wanted to deal with. Um, yeah, I didn't like to be on. What's that? And I agree with Lenny too. If the Steelers go up around two, everybody knows who they're coming for. Yeah, it's probably phrase phrase. Who cares? If you get the deal yeah. done and he's on the board, you get your guy. The whole world can know. Who cares? You got your guy. Um, yeah, I didn't like the Deontay deal either. Although with, with Dante Jackson, you know, that, that's a one year thing. And, and so it's not, you know, he's not here for four, four, four or five years. And so you can draft Wiggins and play in sub packages. Is it the best use of resources? Eh, you could debate that, but, um, you know, just because Jackson is there doesn't mean you can't take an outside corner. If you don't take a corner this year, the outside corner becomes a big knee next year. Agreed. Uh, thanks for the email, Lenny. Uh, and look, I, I don't think you can roll out, you know, technically O-line corner, D line is the first three picks. I mean, um, I wouldn't bet my house against that. Nope. Possible. All right. Uh, anything else late breaking here, Alex? Nope. I think we're good. We'll come back on Monday. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to do my mock, uh, walk the mock on the 19th. And so next Friday uh, for a live draft, um, I'll put our details next week, but I, I, I joined a room, a lobby last night. So one week from today in the evening, sometime around six o'clock, I think it is, we might uh, walk the mock 2.0. Yeah. And what about us, us, the Super Bowl of uh, draft roundtables? That'll be tentatively scheduled for May 20, or May. We can do May 22nd and, and talk about what happened after, but April 22nd, that's a Monday. Uh, we're efforting to bring as many of the Depot crew, could be a giant, giant call, a true roundtable, uh, but that is our, our plan right now. This thing might hit three hours. We're, if we get as many of these guys in there on this on this on this uh, roundtable as we're hoping to get, they're going to be, and you're going to hear from some guys that uh, you haven't heard from before on this show as, as well too. A couple of our draft profile guys as well too. So a lot of, and a couple of these guys really aren't Steeler fans either. So that will be an interesting perspective if we get some of these guys in there. So uh, get ready for that to be a monster show if we get the mm-hmm. if we get it scheduled the way we 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 we'd like to get it scheduled. All right, uh, anything else? I'll get us out of here. Nope, that's all. Let's wrap things up. All right. As soon as you end this show, uh, send us an email, the terrible podcast at gmail.com, assuming you got through it all uh, and say, you guys are out of your ever loving mind. What a waste of time talking about the center, uh, that center, that center position talk and draft uh, uh, talk that you, and rabbit holes. You went, went down, down. Uh, my God, tell us to either get on with it. You know, you didn't enjoy it or say, man, that was absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed every bit of it or or it was just sort of mad. I'm, I'm interested to get some feedback uh, on this, because once again, I, as I said, I, I just get to talk with Alex on this thing sometimes. And I forget we have a listenership and all like that. But uh, send us your thoughts on what you thought about the middle part of this show. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter slash X at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex at. Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and want to donate to the cause, SteedersDepot.com, hit the donate button. Also, if you like an ad free button uh, or ad free version, SteedersDepot.com, hit the ad free button upright navigation bar. Follow the directions that way. Whew. As always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex. <laughs>